We all have this question. When you have enough to eat, what is the most important goal to achieve in life? When I was young, I had constant questions, and even at co college, I could not find the answers. I searched for history, philosophy, social sciences, the natural sciences, and I found nothing to explain to what I was looking for looking for. Why? What? How? Why do people do the things that they do? Why do people think in such different ways? And each way of thinking believes it to be the only truth. How do you find the truth? How have we arri arrived where we are now? Where are we going? Age-old questions. It was only after I graduated from college that I discovered the world of anthropology and archaeology, and there I found these answers. I went back to college, studied foot further, and I've never stopped. One new fact opens many more horizons to investigate. Now that I'm reaching the finish of my long marathon, I sat down and I asked myself, what conclusions can I make about what, I've, what I have learned. The first conclusion is that I, not, I have not done much with all this effort. But more specifically, what can I say about Homo sapiens and his evolution physically, culturally, and intellectually after several millennia of resolving problems? I expected that the main focus would be on human achievements such as art, philosophy, and science. But I was disappointed. I concluded that the evolution of Homo sapiens is basically about economics. Evolution of living organism, organisms begins and ends getting food. The kind of the mouth, the digestive system, the teeth, fangs and claws, beaks and wings, fins and t tails, developed according to the kind of particular food that was available. Mammals were weak and vulnerable compared with la large reptiles, but their smaller size allowed them to run and hide, and being warm-blooded, they could live in a wider ra range of climates. Nevertheless, Homo sapiens began as a loser. Other organisms specialized and adapted to niches with available food and found ways of pre preventing entry by, computer, by competitors. In that world, Homo sapiens was the loser, consuming the food that was left over or not wanted. Of course, I'm exaggerating to make a point here. Human teeth evolved for an omnivorous diet with incisors to bite and chop, molars to grind and tear, bipedalism left hands free to grab and pick up and carry. Eventually, the very specialized consumers became extinct when the particular food was no longer available. Homo crept out of the hiding places, were able to adapt to many environments to innovate experiment, and invent culture as a way of surviving. Now we wonder, we have progressed, pr progressed intellectually, but has the result produced a better world? Is evolution repeating? Are human beings now becoming too specialized and reaching a dead end by relying too much on technology? If the electronic wor world disappears, can we still adapt to new ways mechanically or culturally to survive? There is a second consideration. Because evolving Homo sapiens was vulnerable and weak against predators, the, invi the individuals gathered into groups to protect and def defend each other. One person could not survive alone, but in large numbers it became a force. The group together hunted and collected and shared. 
dividing tasks between them. Group organization was very successful. But group living is difficult, so they devised rules, leaders, lawyers, and police to resolve the conflicts. They managed to retain group unity, but the group itself became a predator, surviving by strength. Force generates repellent force. Thus, the survival of the group, the defense of the group, succeeds by subjugating the, the other, by dominating. This was the adaptive solution and no human brain yet has evolved capable of inventing a better solution. Can this fear, this instinct, this need to protect one's group can ever be resolved? Does one culture always have to show superiority over the others? Is lack of understanding a factor in conflict? Would universal communication and understanding between groups be possible? Can cultural evolution ever be reversed, undone, improved? Archaeology is the only discipline that can look at the past over long centuries, shrinking time as through a telescope to see how culture, cultures have survived or not survived and how and why. The task is long and complicated, but is facilitated and lifted to a higher level by incorporating many other fields of information. I can cite an example when our archaeological project discovered a large, large canal in the Valley of Guatemala. When the valley was first occupied, a large lake existed where Tikal Futura is located now. At first, we assumed that the Maya had constructed the canal to drain the lake about 500, 500 BC, but we soon found that the canal terminated on a fertile plain. We consulted hydraulic engineers who recognized that the canal had been constructed with a sophisticated hydraulic jump to raise and overflow the water and irrigate a large tract of land close to the modern airport. We then further had to consult soil specialists for the potential of the soil, agronomists to determine the, the crops, and botanists to analyze seeds and pollen. The lake dried up about 100 AD, adding questions regarding the ecological reasons for the change, how the population adapted to a new system of agriculture, how the social, sociocultural organization was reestablished, effects of trade relations, and, and so on. When agriculture is a factor in a culture, a calendar is necessary. The Maya calendar is the most sophisticated and accurate of all early calendars, even more practical than ours today. Our calendar is a complex mixture of Babylonian, Roman, and Egyptian considerations of moons, seasons, gods, and egos all tossed together in a disordered mixture. Because of the importance of the calendar in the development of pre-Columbian Mesoamerica, it is necessary to understand calendrical astronomy. With this knowledge, an astronomical observatory was recognized at the archaeological site at Takarikabai on the south coast to track sidereal and solar events and even with a solar clock. In this process, there is evidence that the pre-Columbian astronomers once or twice shifted their view of the universe, implying that Copernican types of intellectual revolutions are not unique. The Maya also had scientific discoveries. These intellectual re revolutions introduced deep-seated changes in both worldviews and in social-cultural reorganization. 
Thus, while economic considerations may be the most basic factor in the direction of the physical evolution of Homo sapiens, intellectual ideas are also powerful and can change the course of cultural development. Great ideas can move mountains. All of you have the potential for the future. We have discussed here that the evolution of Homo sapiens has been driven by three things. Economic need, food and shelter. Two, dependence on group membership. And three, each individual's world view. Nevertheless, these must be balanced so that one does not overpower the other. Can there be moderation and balance in sufficient comfort economically, group membership without one being right and superior to others, and a worldview promoting universal innovation and peace? And finally, can this balance be achieved individually or globally? I leave it to you to decide it, to decide. Thank you.